Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro 18 tutorial for you. And today we're gonna to be learning about the best 8K render settings for YouTube. And just in case you didn't know, Vegas Pro is included in Vegas Post, which is a post-production software suite that includes Vegas Pro, Vegas FX, and Vegas Image. All the affiliate links and information will be posted in the description below, so let's go ahead and jump right into Vegas. Okay, so we have Vegas Pro 18 open. Let's just say you're totally done with your project and you're ready to render in 8K. We're gonna go up to File, and then we're gonna go down to Render As, and the only format we have available for 8K is Magic's HEVC slash AAC. There are no other 8K rendering options. If you try to choose custom resolution for those, they will limit you and they won't let you get to 8K. So if we choose the HEVC one, we're gonna see the options right here at the top. So like 4K, there are two versions of 8K. There's 8K UHD and Cinema 8K. 8K UHD is the most common because it is the 16:9 aspect ratio. It's that perfect rectangle that most monitors are. Cinema 8K is a little bit wider than 8K Full HD. And the reason you wanna choose this is if you're recording in Cinema 8K. This makes your video just a little bit wider than the average rectangle, the 16:9 aspect ratio. So if it's squished down into that, you're gonna have black bars along the top and bottom. There's really no benefit into recording Cinema 8K, unless of course you want those cinematic bars, but for the most part, everybody's gonna use 8K UHD. So the first two options are the Cinema 8K, which are 8192 by 4320 pixels. And the third option is 8K UHD, which is 7680 by 4320. So select whichever one you want, but we're gonna do the UHD, hit customize template. By default, all these options are gonna be locked because this preset is designed specifically for this 8K footage. The first option we could drop down is profile and there are no other options other than default, so we have to choose that one. The next we can customize is frame rate. The lowest you can go is 12, the highest you can go is 240 if you wanted. But for the most part, if you're shooting something cinematic looking, you're gonna go with 23.976. If you're shooting something high frame rate, you're probably going to go with 59.94 or 120. But the higher you go in frame rate, the bigger your file is going to be, so be prepared for that. So we're just going to stick with 23.9 as an average, but you choose whatever your project needs. Make sure allow source to adjust frame rate is unchecked, because if it is checked and you have different types of resolution sizes, that could alter your final resolution output, and we don't want that. Field order, by default, that's on progressive scan, and we cannot change it to anything else. Pixel aspect ratio, by default, that's on 1. And if we drop it down, we get the option to go with 1.333. Now, if you select this one, your video is going to be stretched wider. And most people do not want this. So by default, let's keep that on 1. Now, down here, we have constant bitrate or variable bitrate. The most common bitrate is variable bitrate. And when you utilize that, you choose a maximum bitrate that you want it to go and an average bitrate. And by doing this, this reduces the amount of errors and pixelation that rendering a video of this caliber can produce. But another thing to remember is HEVC is about 40% smaller than the regular AVC format. So your bitrate that you put in here can be 40% smaller and you'll still get the same quality as you would an AVC file. So to give you an example, if we choose our maximum bitrate to be 60 million, which is 60 megabits per second, that's going to have the same quality as a 100 megabits per second AVC file. So you can base your math off of that, but typically when you're shooting something in 8K, you're gonna wanna go the highest bit rate you possibly can to keep the best quality. So we drop down the menu, we can see the maximum quality allows us is 700,000, but that is actually an error, and if you choose 700, 480, or 300, it's gonna drop you down to 240. So the true maximum we can do is 240 megabits per second. So when you choose one of these, if you click away from it, it drops down to 240 megabits per second, which is still an extremely high quality bit rate. And then for average bitrate, you can match it to the maximum, and that's going to provide some pristine quality, but again, it's going to keep your file size pretty high. But if you go one notch lower than the maximum, so 135, that's going to still be extremely high quality, and your bitrate's going to average anywhere between 135 and 240. So I like to have my bitrate one notch lower than the maximum, because that provides the cleanest look. So down here for encode mode, you can't change that. But in future updates, if you can change that, I recommend putting it on your graphics card. So I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so we'd see NVENC encoder. But by default, it's going to be on Intel QSV. Preset, if we drop that down, we have a few options. High speed, speed, balanced, better quality, and best quality. This is basically a scale of quality. High speed means it's going to go pretty quick, but you may see some pixelation or some errors. Best quality means it's going to take the longest, but look the best. So if you want the best quality, you choose best quality. 
down here we can't change chroma subsampling but we can change bits per pixel so by default this is on 8 but you can change it to 10 if you shot in 10 bit if you shot in 8 bit there's no point in changing it to 10. so this number is based on the source footage you have in there by default most things are 8 bits so we're just going to keep it on 8. now let's go down to the audio tab by default include audio is checked you can uncheck that if you don't want audio for some reason sample rate is 48 but you can change that all the way from 8000 to 96. I recommend keeping it on 48 because if you change these numbers around, it could make your voice sound pretty weird depending on the source sample rate you recorded your audio in. By default, most audio is recorded in 44.1 or 48, so by keeping it in one of these two, your voice is going to sound the most accurate. So I'm going to keep it on 48. Now bitrate, if you drop this down, this is the quality scale of your audio, so 6000 is the absolute lowest quality, and we can go all the way up to 512000. The maximum I like to go is 320. Anything above that, you really can't tell any kind of quality difference. But as you start going lower, you can start telling the degradation in your audio. So by keeping it 320, I find that's the really good sweet spot for audio. Now let's go down to the system tab. From here, we cannot change anything because it's all preset. So let's go down to the project tab. For video rendering quality, I like to change this to best. Stereoscopic 3D mode, by default, that's on use project settings. But you can choose any one of these depending on what kind of 8K 3D settings you want to choose if they're specific and custom. But by default, let's choose Use Project Settings. Color Space, you can click this and you have a bunch of options. I always like to put mine on Rec. 709. That's the average color space that most things are viewed on for movies and things like that. But again, that really depends on the type of footage you put in here. So you can keep it on default to be safe, but I like putting mine on Rec. 709 because I like my final product to be in that color space. Color range, by default, it's unlimited, but we also have the full option. Now this depends on, again, your source footage. So I recommend you put it on default, render a little bit of it, see what it looks like. Then put it on full, render a little bit of it, and see what that looks like. Compare them both, and whichever one looks better to you, use that one. But by default, most people are going to put it on limited and keep it there. So we're just going to keep it on limited. Rename it whatever you want. And then you can hit this little floppy disk right here and you've successfully saved your preset. Hit OK and you'll see it down here and you can click little star and favorite if you want it. And those are the best 8K render settings. And there you have it. If this tutorial helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And if you want to support the channel through Patreon, you can do that as well. I have a link in the description below. So thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see you all in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content.